In this video, I'm going to show you how to figure out and resize the landing joist for a floor landing, something that's going to attach to either a concrete foundation or a wood framed foundation. I guess realistically, it could attach to anything if uh, and uh, using the simple methods that I'm going to show you should provide you with a way to accomplish that. Now the, I'm going to be talking about resizing the joist here in the landing. And let's just say for example we have a six and a half inch total rise. This would be a six and a half inch rise for the landing, six and a half inches for each individual riser. Now I'd like to point something out. Uh, if you have a landing like this, let's say it's a 36 inches by 36 inches, I'm not 100% sure that building code authorities consider the landing or could consider it part of the stairway. The stairway is actually something that would start here and go up. This could actually be considered another floor. With that said, I'm not saying that it isn't or it is. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. I've known plenty of carpenters who simply uh, have a framing plate on the ground, throw a 2 by 6 on top and then three quarters of an inch plywood that gives them a seven and three quarter inch to total overall rise and then they just readjust the risers on the stairway to make it easier on themselves. Now I used to do a lot of track framing and this is something that uh, we did a lot of. If we had a rise that was close to seven and three quarter inches we could actually do that um, and uh, most building codes allow for a three eighths variation maximum this would actually fall into that uh, because there would only be a quarter of an inch difference if you had a seven and a half inch total rise here and a seven and three quarter inch rise here that wouldn't be a problem that'd be something i don't even think you would notice using the stairway again you would need to check with your local building authorities for for clarification. But let's go ahead and take a look at if we had a six and a half inch rise, total overall rise, we would need to resize the joist to four and a quarter inches. Let me just go through the simple math here. Six and a half inch total overall rise and then we subtract an inch and a half from that and you can do this with a piece of paper or calculator to see what you come up with or to verify my number let me know if it's wrong any of my numbers you have a, if we subtract an inch and a half from six and a half that gives us five inches if we subtract another three quarters of an inch from the five inches that will give us four and a quarter inches so we would that, that's how we would end up with that and then we would need to resize the lumber let's take a look at another example what if it's seven and a half inches again we subtract these numbers from the seven and a half inches if we subtract an inch and a half from seven and a half that gives us six subtract three quarters of an inch from six we end up with five and three quarters and again this is the distance of the width of the joist not the length this is the width what you would need to rip the lumber down to now what if we have seven and a quarter inches again an inch and a half from seven and a quarter is going to give us uh, six now it's going to give us five and three quarters subtract another three quarter inch from that and that's going to give us five inches I hope that is self-explanatory basic math let's take a look at what you'd be how you'd be ripping the lumber down let's just say that in our example you had a six and a half inch total rise you would and then you had a two by six you could you would just rip the lumber down you could uh, do it with a circular saw or a table saw um, just simply grab the two by six and I believe it was four and three quarters right four and three quarters that it needed to rip down let's just take go back and take a look at that yeah four and a quarter inches so we need we would need this joist to be four and a quarter inches wide so we would take and just measure from one end of the two by six four and a quarter go to the other end measure four and a quarter and then snap a line or use a straight edge to draw the line and then simply rip it down with a circular saw or a table saw to the size that you need 
And basically, this is how you figure the size of the landing joist for a floor landing like this.